to the Top 1% Sellers podcast series. My guest today is Ron Ritchie. He's a vice president, vice president at Cisco Systems, and I'm going to give Ron an opportunity to introduce himself a bit more, and then we'll delve deeper into a conversation that's focused on powerful communications in an X-as-a-service uh, world and, and see uh, Ron's viewpoints on that, and then take a look at how sellers can really get good at communicating the, their value proposition in this particular uh, uh, tumultuous change that's happening in high tech and also for how customers are adopting and consuming technology. So with that, Ron, welcome. Ash, it's a pleasure to uh, see you again and hear from you and uh, congratulations on uh, the great work around top 1%. We're all trying to get there, so I appreciate giving us a big golden bar to get to. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. I want to take a, take a minute here, just give the audience a sense of uh, what you're doing today, what you're seeing happening in, in high tech, um, and we'll then get into more questions in a bit. Sure. Let me tell everybody what I do just for context. Um, I do work in Cisco sales and I provide uh, my team and I four sales experiences uh, for sellers. So we're responsible for the experience executive teams have and they come through our executive experience centers uh, here in San Jose and around the world. Second, I manage the demonstrations team at Cisco. Third, our proof of concept uh, labs team. And then fourth, our global proposals organization. All in all, uh, my team will be responsible for about 500,000 customer experiences on behalf of sellers in the next uh, uh, fiscal year or over 2017, as we say it here at Cisco. Wow. Uh, so uh, it's a pretty big footprint, and, and, and that means I, have, I think I have the best job in the company because I spend all day long with customers and, and watching sales teams interact with customers and uh, helping them to try to advance their goals and their relationships uh, down uh, the road a bit. So it's a great question uh, because I do think um, customers are at a very interesting time right now when they're looking at technology. Um, and, and I'll offer a, a thought for you and your, and your listeners about really where customers are in their journey. Um, and, and I think, you know, uh, you and I have known each other for quite a while, and I know you're a thought leader in your own right. You've been sort of watching and, and leading some of the trends of the industry. You know, about four years ago, we started talking about this thing called Internet of Things. Yes. Right? Exactly. And, then it, and then quickly it became the Internet of Everything, right? And then after that, it became digit, digitization. And yes. digitization really is um, sort of the core uh, conversation that customers are having today. And, and I'd say that here in the Cisco San Jose Customer Experience Center, Ash, the number one question that we're asked by customers today is, is how will digitization impact either their customer or employee experience? Yes, that's, and, and I, I've seen that a lot because I, as I mentioned, I was speaking with uh, another guest here on the podcast and we were talking about, you know, digitization and the digital vortex and how much change that's generating for a lot of companies. Um, you know, and as you are going through those customer conversations, um, you, and, and of course the move towards X as a service, uh, what are you you're seeing as, as being sort of like the, the top ask for these customers these days? Are they trying to shift completely to an X as a service model? Where are they in that transition? Uh, terrific question, and and I think it, you know the way that I like to think about that is is sort of where what phase is the customer mindset in as it looks at digitization and some of these incredible X as a service uh, opportunities, and and if you if you think about it, you know at the beginning of the IoT IOE revolution four or five years ago, people were asking a lot of why questions like why should I care about this right. Yes. And, then, and then maybe two or three years ago, it was, well, what can I do about that now that I know that I should really be caring and excited about that? And then, and then I think in the last year, we've seen a fundamental shift in the way customers think to move not to why should I care or what should I do, yes. but to how should I do it? Yes. And we're in the how phase right now. And, and I think fundamentally to your question, as, as uh, organizations examine the how phase, um, it, it sort of doesn't matter what industry you're in. You're in some transition from offering something that looked like a product to something that has essentially a service characteristic to it. Exactly. Uh, whether that service characteristic is self-serve or whether it's some B for B 
video-based delivered service while you're moving around uh, uh, like we are right now. Yes. But I think that that's the, the, the consideration is, is how to service enable via digitization the core business model and processes of companies. But it's in the how phase. No one knows exactly what all the answers are going to be. Yeah. I just know now that it's no longer a boardroom conversation where we wonder if we should think about this. Yes. It's, let's go explore it. So companies are actively exploring and they're actively experimenting and a few thought leaders are actually doing it. Amazing. I um, want to reflect with you on um, not just what Cisco is doing, but perhaps what high tech companies are doing. Maybe you see them doing and you see them or should be doing, right? As, as that transformation happens, how should these companies think about themselves when you think about the past and then with a look with a view into the future? And I think a lot of them are going through the, those transitions as well. Yeah, it's a great question, you know, and I think we hear all the time about, um, you know, sort of, you know, we, we think in linear terms, but the world is moving in exponential terms, right? Yes, you know, yes. Faster than, than all of us, you know, can sort of grasp. Exactly. And, and I think when you translate that idea of wanting to have exponential performance and being able to deliver exponential value through these new digitization and access of service capabilities. Yes. What's important is, is that um, some markets like the taxi industry were waiting to be disrupted. There was no, you know, the sort of alternative was literally, you know, something that was sort of pre IBM mainframe. And yes. And that's just not the case in the rest of uh, industries. There's, there's much more nimble on top of it players starting from much greater position of strength as incumbents, you know, uh, whether what industry it's in, pharmaceuticals, financial services, or, or high tech. Yes. So what that really means is, is that companies are um, asking themselves, how do we take our fundamental advantages and, and really amplify them through digitization. Yes. And, and what they're finding is, Ash, is that advantages are what people do. And so when they're in this how phase, companies are asking themselves a lot of fundamental questions about the way they organize for success and how they lead through success. Yes. And what kind of culture do they need to have in order to be successful? Yes. So uh, one thing I would say to the sellers listening to this, as companies go through this how phase, it's important to know that there are a lot of unanswered questions in the mind of customers, like how do I organize for digitization? What best practices have proven to be successful in digitization? As you deliver these new excess of service capabilities, what's the right way to measure that? So a tremendous amount of thought leadership knowledge still being created just as we speak. And I think that's the kind of conversation I think that customers are having and, and, and they're looking for people that they know can bring some value to that. Yes, definitely, definitely. And I think in, in your world, there's exactly what you were just saying. There are several places where those touch points with the customers are happening, that that conversation is not necessarily led by the salesperson alone, but it's all, almost across the board how content is put in front of that customer, right? Yeah, how are you managing against that? Yeah, I think you really nailed it there. You know, I think that I'll give you a statistic here at Cisco's Customer Experience Center. You know, um, you know, when I first got this job, you know, we used to call it the Executive Briefing Center, a Cisco out experience, right? Yeah. And when we positioned it and, and that as the what you the value you'd receive, about 70% of our attendees were from the IT industry. As we sort of flipped our experience and took an outside in customer perspective and built around that goal, Yes. In the audience shift to about 70% line of business. So wow. you've had almost a complete inversion of who's visiting. Yes. And what's critical about that is, and I would say this is where I know your thought process um, has also evolved uh, to feel this way. Yes. Is that the, um, the line of business um, people that are there to, to come and understand what digitization means to them, they're largely thinking about this in narrative terms in horizontal narrative terms. They're not thinking about it in product terms or in feature terms. They think about it in, you know, what is sort of the narrative of what we're trying to achieve as a company? Yes. What is the sort of capability we need to build? And it by definition cuts across silos. Yes, exactly. I think an entirely new way of thinking about content needs to be uh, put in front of the customer 
from where we were. And it's going to be a struggle for a lot of sellers who grew up in the product era uh, where the roadmap was the goal uh, yes. versus the narrative across a set of line of business leaders in a vertical. Yes. Uh, that's, I think, one of the great growth and development uh, objectives for all of us as sellers. Absolutely. And, and, and that essentially then maps into that customer experience that, whether they are, you know, uh, you're getting, they're giving a service from you, for, from your organization or buying a product. When they are doing that, whatever process they're touching, it is actually a multi-business unit process. You know, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, I think that's that. I think that you know the multi-business unit in the way we organize content and stories around the business unit. Yes. For the company and the vendor, and it might have worked for the company and the vendor with one audience, like an IT department. Yes. But as soon as you start to introduce multiple audiences, like the line of business, multi-business unit conversations quickly fragment into, I'm not really sure what you just said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I, I mean, it's yes. just natural evolution of where we are. Um, people really are expecting sellers and the companies they represent to show up with a narrative that works horizontally across their customer, Good not night. a feature that solves a problem in a, in, in a particular department of a customer. Exactly. That's terrific, Ron. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll pause here uh, and kind of mark this as the end of our, the first portion of our conversation. We'll go off to a commercial break. And when we come back, I want to get some specifics from you for how sellers can really think about that conversation in terms of how do they prep for it and how they have it with their own customers. We'll be right back.